Let me introduce this painting to you, first of all. It's a painting by somebody called Matthias Grunwald. It was painted in 1515, and it's the altarpiece in a monastery in a place called Eisenheim. It was painted just before the Reformation, uh, Luther's theses were 1517, so it's before that. But it's a sermon, a meditation on Jesus, our Redeemer, in a painting. We see Christ's dying body distorted by the torture of the cross, the thorns, the blood. And around the cross is John the Baptist on the right, a lamb at his feet, Mary Magdalene kneeling in prayer, and Jesus' mother being supported by John, the disciple. Just leave a moment's silence as you have a chance to look at the whole painting. (coughs) What I want to do now is show you some features of the painting. Here is a reminder that sin is a serious business. Every morning and every evening in the temple, in accordance with the law, a priest sacrificed a lamb. For the sins of the people of Israel. And so long as the temple stood, the daily sacrifice took place. This lamb seems to say, in the temple every day, a lamb is offered for the sins of the people. But look... The lambs looking at the cross. Jesus is the only sacrifice that can truly deliver us from our sins. He was oppressed, afflicted. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. John the Baptist stands with his fingers pointing to the cross. And in Latin's written the words, John 3 verse 30, He must become greater as I must become less. I, John the Baptist, came to remind people of their sin. I asked them to be baptised for the forgiveness of sins. But I must become less. He must become greater. And I point to the one on the cross. To the dying Jesus. What matters is not my desires, my wants, my feelings. I must be replaced by Jesus. Kneeling before the cross, Mary Magdalene. In Luke 8, we're told that this woman had seven demons cast out of her. She'd been in bondage physically, spiritually, emotionally. She was hopeless and helpless until Jesus came along, prayed for her and redeemed her. She was ultimately delivered through a miraculous encounter with Jesus. 
And now as she kneels before the cross, I wonder if she wonders about Jesus and the cost of redemption. Lord, for me, you moved out of heaven from light to the darkness of the world. For me, you delivered me from the power of Satan to the power of God. You're being made sin for me, so I delivered from guilt to forgiveness. Mary Magdalene, who's experienced the generous redemption of God in life, kneels. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner saved by your blood. Nobody likes to see their child bullied, teased, despised, friendless. And now she stands near the cross. A sword pierces Mary's heart, penetrating her soul. She stays by the cross watching her son's flayed skin, watches the nails in his hands, sees the suffocation. The cross takes on cosmic significance. The God-bearer watches her hope die. She stands in the place of all mothers who suffer. The child in the cancer ward. The mother who hears the news that a child has died in a road traffic accident. The mother of the child who's gone off the rails and wishes her dead. The mothers of Abafan, Hiroshima, Rwanda, the concentration camps. Dear mother, here is your son. And even in death, Jesus provides for her generously. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was finished, said, to fulfil the scriptures, I thirst. (coughs) Fulfilling Psalm 69, scorn has broken my heart and left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar to drink. We can never understand suffering. But Jesus became human. experienced suffering on our behalf as he takes upon himself the sin of the world in generous love he cries out I thirst he knows the pain Mozambique, deserts of Ethiopia, the camps of Darfur. See from his head, his hands, his feet. 
Sorrow and love flow mingling down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? The last word he cries out is, it is finished. The Greek word, tetaleste, means paid in full, stamped on bills, on invoices when they were paid. His last words, it is finished. The three hours of torture, of agony, of rejection. It is finished. The three hours of bearing our sin. It is finished. We're brought back from bondage and slavery. We were slaves to sin, slaves to lust, slaves to the world, slaves to the law, slaves to religious ceremony, slaves to dead works, slaves to arrogance, slaves to pride. Slaves to self-importance. We had no freedom. It is finished. We are redeemed. Today we taste the body and blood of Christ in bread and wine. We taste our redemption. Through the very act of communion, we'll hear God say to us again, Child, I love you. Go in peace through my generosity. You are Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. Amazing love. We'll keep quiet for a minute or two and then the service will just resume. So free, so infinite His grace. 